I won't give you the complete history of it, but they were basically um, large houses uh, where people who were too poor to um, afford board and lodging could live and they were expected to do some uh, manual work in return for their board and lodging. They had existed in Bath for some time. There's a very good example on um, the London Road in the Walcott area and there's another one out at Bath Eastern also on the London Road. There's a couple of houses at the bottom of Lincoln Hill which were once a workhouse but in 1834 the government decided as governments do that there was an awful lot of this being poor around and that we needed a national system so they passed something called the Poor Law Reform Act and they set up this national system of workhouses in England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, which of course at that time the whole of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. And so that was how they came to build this huge and extremely ugly structure up at Oddown. What sparked your interest in, in looking into the Bath workhouse and its origins? I, it was completely accidental. Um, my cousin Graham um, had contact with somebody who knew about family history and he'd always collected bits and pieces about the family and he discovered that our or two of our great-grandparents had died in the workhouse and were buried in unmarked graves on this um, field on the Wells Road. Yeah? So the book which, or the booklet, which we have just pub published, which is a basic bog standard history of the Bath Workhouse and how it eventually evolved into St Martin's Hospital, this is being sold in support of a campaign to have a proper memorial at the burial ground. Um, there are uh, over 3,000 bodies in that one field and there's a further 1,000 bodies who are buried round the chapel on the Midford Road. And somebody tells me that there's a planning application for this particular site and apparently they don't know that there are 1,107 bodies buried on what they want to build on. Why, why did so many people die? Well, I mean, people die any rate. Uh, poor people tend to die more frequently than rich people. Um, the general standard of housing and diet and health for working class people in 1830s, 1840s Bath was abysmal. And one of the ironies of it is that although the diet was, you know, absolutely basic and terribly boring with lots and lots of gruel, um, they probably had a healthier diet in the workhouse than outside of the workhouse. But of course, when you get hundreds and hundreds of people in the same place like that. I mean, the workhouse was built for about 600 people and within a few years of opening in 1838, it had somewhere in the region of eight or 900 pe people. And when you take account of cholera and measles and scarlet fever and all the other diseases that are going round, um, it's a jolly good job they didn't have COVID because that would probably wiped out the complete population of the workhouse. It, it's a bit ironic, isn't it? In, in a, a city where the, the rich came to enjoy themselves at their leisure uh, was also housing hundreds of poor people who had no means at all. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the other thing that has to be said about Bath is that it did attract people in from outside, from the villages of North Somerset, but also from as far away as um, Ireland. 
And um, th that was how my great grandparents came to be there because they were part of a lineage of 300 years of illiterate farm labourers up at Chewton Mendip on top of the Mendip Hills. And um, suddenly this, this one member of the family called Charles, he decides that he's going to get married to a Bath girl and he's going to come to Bath to make his fortune. And of course he didn't make his fortune. He had a bit of work here, a bit of work there, no way at all to save for his old age. So Charles and Anne ended up in 1890 in the Bath workhouse. It's a, it's, it's a sad story, but I think it could, if you were an angry sort of person, it could make you very, very angry. And when people go on about the past and how wonderful it was, um, it just makes me laugh, really. But, but Bath was a divided city. Bath has always been a divided city. And that's why it's so wonderful that we're actually recording this interview in the Museum of Bath at Work, which does represent, I think, in a very real way, that completely different history of the city of um, ordinary working people trying to make do, sometimes managing, sometimes not managing. We must go on to say, because the title of uh, your booklet does, uh, Workhouse to Hospital. So at mm. some point it, it stopped being a place where the poor uh, ended their days and became a, a, a place of healing. Well, I think there was a general uh, movement through the 19th cent century to actually realise that a lot of people, in fact the vast majority of people who were in the workhouse were not there because they were feckless or work shy. Um, they were there because they were, um, I think in modern terms, we would say they had mental health issues. The Victorians used the term lunatics and they had chronic ill health. Quite a lot of them were children who'd been abandoned and some of them were simply elderly people uh, who had no way of keeping themselves in later life. So when um, in 1940 we leap forward to one of the most magnificent stories in the whole city of Bath which is the story of Dr Clara Cross and she of course was the wife of the founder of Cross Eng Engineering up on uh, Midford Road Coombe Down immediately opposite the workhouse and she was appointed in 1940 to set up a wartime emergency hospital and she was totally shocked by the conditions that she found there because although it was supposed to not still be a workhouse, in fact there were quite large numbers of mainly elderly people sort of hanging around the place, lying on beds and generally waiting to die. So um, it was Dr Cross, I think, and also the way that um, wartime does push um, social change that actually led to the complete shutdown of the workhouse and the whole site going over to medical work. But if you speak to very, very elderly people uh, in Bath, I think most of them are probably dead and gone now, but towards the end of the 20th century there was extreme reluctance on the part of uh, very elderly working class people in Bath to actually be admitted to um, the um, wards at St Martin's Hospital which were reserved for care of the elderly because of course it was still seen as the workhouse and they knew jolly well that their chances of coming out of it were fairly slim. I mean, not because they were going to be kept in there, but they were um, probably going to die of whatever illness they had. What sort of memorial would you like to see? Uh, I think that's not up to me. I mean, I don't live in Bath any longer. 
Um, I don't particularly like Bath any longer. I live at Froome in Somerset, which is much more amenable. I think it's up to the people who live up there, um, the people who now live in the old building of the workhouse and the new houses that have been put, put up there, the people who live in older houses in Old Town, um, the local counts councillors. I mean, I, th I think um, there has to be general discussion about it. And I know the head at um, St Martin's Garden School has some very interesting I ideas about this. But obviously everything is on hold a bit at the moment because of the pandemic. And the reason why we chose to publish this booklet at this point in time was precisely because things were beginning to open up a bit. The Museum at Bath at work was um, moving towards opening. Other places were moving towards opening. Yeah. And we also had this tremendous support from Harry Wainwright at the Ophir Park Bookshop and um, this wonderful Facebook group called Moreland Road is amazing, <laughs> which I mean, I truly think Moreland Road is amazing. I think it's a terribly interesting place, by far the most interesting bit of Bath. That's going to please a lot of people. Yeah. Now, the, the booklet is, uh, you can buy it here at the Museum of Bath at Work, and Stuart Burroughs, the curator, said there is a lot of information here too uh, about the Bath Workhouse and St Martin's. And I take it the booklet is also available at the Oldfield Park, Park. bookshop. It's, it's available at the Oldfield Park bookshop. Um, I did try to interest toppings, but not unsurprisingly, they were not interested at all. Um, they were a bit preoccupied with their move, I think, at the moment. But there we go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so so they were so so it's Oldfield Park bookshop. Um, or the Museum of Bath at Work, um, or there are various individuals and supporters of the group, um, the, the uh, campaign group to set up the memorial, who are sort of drifting around the odd down area <laughs> with copies in their pockets. I, I think for the benefits of this interview, I, I will recommend uh, either coming here or making contact Absolutely. with Oldfield Park yeah. Bookshop. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much indeed for your time, for coming back into this city that you don't like very much anymore, <laughs> from Froome, which of course is that up-and-coming trendy place. But, Absolutely, um, yeah. Did you enjoy doing this research and, and writing the book? Uh, not especially. Um, I found it terribly depressing, not least, of course, because Bath has not got a proper history centre, which I find quite astonishing and the research had to be done um, down in the basement of the Bath Guild Hall which is the Bath Record Office. The people records, who are doing a great job John we must say. People who are doing a great job under difficult circumstances but the ledgers that contain all the basic information are like this. Just like Mr Bowler's. Except that Mr Bowler kept his in better condition and probably used better leather binding. <laughs> you have to wear gloves because the old leather covers are actually rotting. And unfortunately, um, even wearing gloves, I mean, they may protect your hands, but you still get it on your clothes and your papers and everything else. I mean, it's a, there, there's a lot, lot more to be found out about it, but it actually needs brave young people, I think, who are prepared to brave the horrors of <laughs> Bath Guild Hall to do the research. Yeah. Well, well done you, and thank you for your time. Not at all. It's been a pleasure.